Jeff Tharp is a clown. No, really, he's made an impressive living as Tharpo the clown for many years as he lives his mission to bring happiness to the world. Now he's transitioning to life coaching, but his mission remains the same. Meet Tharpo the happiness coach on today's episode of the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast. You are listening to the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast, a show devoted to uncovering the systems and the secrets that set the best apart, where you learn how to take your coaching clients to the next level, while you grow the coaching practice of your dreams. So sit back and relax, or sit up and get excited. Either way, you might want to pay attention. This could be important. Jeff Tharp, so nice to have you here. Thanks for joining us on the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast. Oh, I am so honored to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. It's, you know, I've known you for a couple of years now. You've been taking my classes, the NLP class, the Slater Math class, the hypnosis courses. Um, and I've, you know, gotten to know you quite well. And I have deep respect for your abilities, et cetera. But the reason I really wanted you on this show today is, is well, you're fun, but uh, I guess, <laughs> but, but you, you are a really unique kind of guy. You've been, you've been plying your trade. You've been making a living for many years as a clown. Now, just as an aside, I like to tell people my wife's a clown because, well, she is, and and she teaches clowning at the new school in New York City and the Barrow Group Theater. But it's more of a theatrical clowning. It's it's not, you know, what you do. You you are like really kind of a circus clown, and you you've got like two houses full of clown, <laughs> clown props and and stuff. And you've made a damn good living. You've made a very 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 good living as a clown. Um, a living people would be envious of no matter what profession they're in. You've done extremely well. You also, you know, have a, a, a thing where you hire other entertainers and you're kind of the go-between for, you know, placing them in places, et cetera. You're doing great. And the reason I want you on this show is you are also now transitioning into being a life coach. And, and you probably continue some clowning as well along the way, just like I still do some music along the way sometimes, but but that transition is something that a lot of people have to go through if they're moving from whatever business they're in into coaching. And I just see you as being, you know, on the precipice of being very successful in that business as well. And so I just want to, you know, pick your brain a little bit about, you know, what you're doing, what you're thinking, what's the process you're going about to, to make that transition, because I think it'd be really valuable for people to know that, because after all, if you can, you know, do a transition from being a professional clown to being a, 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 you know, life coach, I think pretty much anybody can do the same thing from whatever profession they're in. So tell us about that, Jeff. First of all, tell us a little bit about your background. You, you've been a clown for how long? And tell me what that means exactly. Uh, well, let's, let's start out really, um, I went to college, I, I, I didn't have the greatest childhood, but we won't go into that. But uh, then I went to college and I was told I wasn't very smart when I was in high school and everything. But when I went to college, uh, it changed because of a different atmosphere. Now I, I became where I wanted to be happy. And so I somehow be- I went to be an artist and then I got a C. So I said, I didn't want to be an artist. And then I, uh, my roommate was a theater major. So and he seemed to, this is true too. This is there. He was seeming to get all these girls. And I thought, okay, maybe I should get some girls. But then I, I I really thought this might be the thing for me. So I started auditioning and I started getting plays. And then I won a scholarship, a Kathleen Turner scholarship and performance. And wow. then finally got my degree. I did 13 plays in college. I, uh, I was born on the 13th. And then after that, I did 13 commercials. Some of them were national commercials. And then I've done about 10,000 events as an entertainer. I've been doing entertainment, either acting or something, for 35 years. And uh, in 1988, I decided, because of my childhood, I wanted to live. So I started learning. So I I was taking, at the time, I was learning about Anthony Robbins. 
Robbins at the time, who became Tony Robbins later on. So I started out with some of that stuff. And there was a thing called. Uh, uh, so I started studying things like this. <laughs> nobody, oh, you nobody, can't see can, nobody can see that. Yeah, no, nobody can see. But anyway, what is that? Down. so uh, there was uh, just so much studying of all these people. So I would learn and I thought 19, I thought when I was 19, I would do a whole thing called niche, help mm-hmm. people, help people find the one thing they want to do in life and do that, even if it's free. So that's what I would, one of the things I would tell people, wherever they are, if they are people who want to change a profession, change the one that you want to do. And then you can use your ease your your you kind of I I use your ease a lot your little ease program ease just I, yeah and I, I you know that one so I what I I do is just I tell them just start out a little bit at a time mm-hmm. and then keep on but keep on 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 every day every day every day do something okay good That's, let me just let me just stop you there Jeff because I I know that you can go on without the programs I w- I could just let you. Go for the rest of the hour. Okay, but, but let me just stop you. you. You've you've alluded to your childhood, but you didn't go into it, and that we don't want to spend a lot of time in detail. But just suffice it to say, um, you had a rough childhood. You had a from the first day out, out of the womb. You had a rough childhood, and there were times along the way that you were thinking about quitting, you know, ending your life, etc. And and it's kind of interesting to me that you came from all of that. And yet, like you said, a, few, a moment ago, you just said, I, I decided to live. And um, not only that, you are kind of devoting your life to making other people happy, uh, or helping them to find the way to be happy. And, you know, as a clown, that was pretty obvious how you did that. And but now you're also niching into being a happiness coach. In fact, I think that is your byline, right? Your Tharpo, the happiness coach, is that correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They can't say yes. Start with the happiness coach. Yeah. We we might have a, a picture on the thing at some point. <laughs> <Woo-hoo>. <laughs> you know, this is audio for the most part. So, yeah, I know it says it on your T-shirt, but most people can't see that. Yeah, I know. I was <laughs> getting it. Uh, so Tharp, Tharpo was your clown name? Yeah, Tharpo. Tharpo is my. OK, so my last name is Tharp. And they go, oh, <laughs> And when you're in high school, when you play football, you're Tharp. Yeah. And when you're anything in anything, your last name is brought up, not your first name, because there's too many Jeffs. Uh-huh. So yeah. uh, then I go, oh, and then they get it, Tharpo. Gotcha. So you're Tharpo, the happiness coach. So, right. Yeah. So you, 1987, you started studying people like Tony Robbins. I started, yeah, everything about motivation and how to keep alive, because I was still in that situation transition to help people be happy because that made me where I could, you know, deserve to live and everything where I, I thought it was right. And I, I didn't believe for 10 years, <laughs> for 10 years, I, I had, I had little things behind my back. If I didn't go forward, I went backwards. So I, I just didn't uh-huh. have a choice, but to learn. So I started learning in 1988 after I won my scholarship and performance and graduated, I thought, I'm not going to do anything unless I improve because. And when did you go to clown college? I didn't go to clown college. I went oh. to, I got my degree okay. and I've been to some colleges, but I learned in, you know, while doing it, I learned how to unicycle and juggle. And, uh, you know, I took, I've got a theater dance background. Okay. So, uh, so I, I could do fencing and ballet. And how did, you, how did you go from being that to being a, an actual clown? Well, it was another transition. Basically, we just transitioned to where we're going. So I started learning all the skills. So the first skill you want to do for money as a clown, learn balloons. So I can uh, I can do balloons, but you can't see it. But I can do balloons behind my back. Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, and then I learned the, the skills that made money. So I can face paint. I could. I, I did everything. I, I became an all arounder. So mm-hmm. clown, mime, juggler, unicycle, stilt walker, face painter, balloon sculpture, character. I wrote poetry. I I did library shows. I've done a little bit of everything. And then I did movies and commercials and industrial films, whatever came up. And I kept on doing that. And that, you know, it was, it made a living and it, you know, paid for some houses and stuff like that. And then, you know, now 
because you know what I, I thought just you know about 10 years uh, eight to 10 years ago I thought I don't know when I'm going to die because all my sisters have died uh, my mother's dead everybody's dead and they uh, my other brother has 10 heart attacks and my other sister I mean my other brother has kidney had kidney cancer so who knows how long I'll live so that's why I switched and started helping people with happiness. I just want people, I, I would like to help people be happier because I know it was so hard for me in life. So when we transition, I think what we do is we bring all the, uh, the learnings that we had from our other job, mm-hmm. but we go to the next job with what a lot of people are saying, but I believe you have to find something you really want to put your heart in. So whatever that is for anybody next, Make sure that's what you want to do. I, I've, I know I know NLP guys who work 10 years and then they finally got some clients and they didn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. Let's not do that. Because uh, he came to me and said, hey, I, I hate people not doing what I'm telling them to do. And I'm like, oh, well, you got to listen to these people. You have to understand. Uh, you can't tell them what to do. You can say, open it up give them the choice because we can't make anybody do anything. And he was, I guess, going, you should, must, who ought to. I don't do any of that. I I say, let's help people get the options so they can make their own decision because, and that's what we'll, you know, talk about later. But I really believe really, I want whoever changes their stuff, find heart in what you're doing. If you don't like people, if you don't want to help people, don't become a coach. Seriously, find it. If it's in your heart, do it. If it's not, then don't do it. Okay, so now we got that it's in our heart. So now what's our next step? Our next step is to say what was good in our last business. So what I started doing, I don't know, about two or three, four years ago, I started just doing talks to the world because I didn't care. I just didn't care if I made money or not. I just want to help people. So I started this. So what, so I started doing happy talks almost every day during the, um, you know, the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd go out and I'd be walking six miles and telling them how they can help themselves. And then they're doing doing these talks on YouTube or yeah. YouTube channel. So there's, I've got probably 50, 100 of, I think, something like that, if they want to go back and look at those. But uh, so then just because, you know, in your class and uh, our mastermind class and everything like that, we've been going, we need to go forward. And so that's the steps. Every day, do something that improves your business. You can tell I've been working on a new logo. Yeah. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, well, shoot, can... I'm doing it again. But yeah, so I've been working on a new logo. I've there got will, there will be an out. image. There will be, I'll, I'll do a yeah. screen. Anyway, cap. There's, okay. There, uh, <laughs> so, so we start doing everything it takes to get in business. We start making our websites. We start getting our stuff. We start talking to other people, understanding what, uh, how they're doing it. So, <laughs> Uh, so what you want to do is find somebody who's real successful and just like your podcast, basically follow your podcast and you can get so many hints. I think everybody in your podcast brings a, a certain thing and some of them they're, they're repeating the same stuff, but it's okay because it's true. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, I, I think the last one I've heard one of your podcasts, they did what kind of what I do follow with your heart. Now, uh, most people in NLP or, uh, you know, hypnotists will say follow with, um, uh, 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 come on, you know it. <laughs> follow your bliss? No, uh, basically, uh, you want to get uh, rapport first. And I uh-huh. yeah. I don't believe, for me, rapport, I, I know it matters, but I think following with the heart. And uh, one of your last podcasts, when you said something, or he said it, 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 when you follow with your heart and you have studied enough, and I have studied enough, you can trust yourself that your heart or your unconscious mm-hmm. mind will show you the way. So when I go into a situation where somebody's in front of me, I just open up my heart to their heart and we connect. And then I tell them, I will. I will be bring no harm 
physical or mentally or anything. And if you want to work with me, then we can do this. And you have to do your share and I have to do my share. And I'm your guide and you're the, that's one thing I think a lot of people maybe don't do that tell the, the client that they have their own responsibility. Because a lot of clients will come to you and they'll say, you know, fix me. Right, 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 exactly. <laughs> and, you, and you can't do it. You can't fix anyone. They have to fix themselves. And, you know, t- in, in fairness as well, you know, you can't make, make somebody happy either. You know, you are the right. happiness guy, but you can't make someone happy. No, and I used to want to. I don't want to do that anymore. Really, I set out to make people happy, and I found out I was using my map. That's mm-hmm. where it comes in. I'm using my map of the world to say everybody should do this. And when I do that, then I'm actually, I believe, doing wrong. So I have stopped that. I am not a, a pusher of happiness anymore. I am a <laughs> happiness coach. <laughs> if you want to. Yeah. Pusher. Pusher. I was. <laughs> I really was. I hey, really hey was bud, you want some happiness? Psst. Yeah. Hey, hey come, come here. here. Come here, buddy. Want What's a little it? bit of happiness? I got some right in my pocket here. <laughs> no, and but the truth is, I was pushing it. If you ever seen any of my earlier, uh, uh, whatever podcasts or whatever we're doing in front of all these people, mm. you, it would be like pushing it. Hey, man, you need to be happy. <laughs> it's like, oh no, <laughs> and, uh, no, no, and, and, and I didn't realize that because I was so. I was so caught up in my happiness, really wanting to be happy. And I can tell you, if you, here's a real belief of mine. If you're, you become a coach or anything and you believe in what you're doing and you have some issues yourself, helping the other people will solve most of your issues. Mm-hmm. Because when you help somebody else, you help yourself. That's so I really believe that. So, uh, you know, and that's probably why I, you know, the whole life, my whole life was, wanting to solve my own thing wanted to be happy so that's why i'm a happiness coach because Mm -hmm. make helping other people and this is helping not making other people to be happy so what we're going to do is we're going to there's so many things i can you know the number one thing i think for anyone even a coach to do is to um go to the person in front of you and say what are you telling yourself inside? What is your self-talk? I think this is the number one thing for me and everything is say, what are you saying to yourself? Because a negative self-talk, I think, is one of the things that take away your happiness and also uh, make your life a lot miserable. So what I want them to do first, and this, I won't work with anybody unless they do this, is start being aware of what they're saying to themselves. Okay. Let, yeah. me, just, let me just stop you there because that's okay. that yes, important. Sir. That sounds important. And, and, um, you know, I think it's curious that, that, uh, you know, you you had such a, you know, negative childhood, et cetera. And that what you said is that you are in a sense working on your own stuff to get, you want happiness for yourself. You want to be happy. So now you're the happiness guy and you're helping other people to be happy in a sense to make yourself happy. And, and then I'm curious what would happen if you suddenly say, Oh my God, I am just totally happy inside screw this happiness stuff. Let's make people what, what else? What's next? Um, fulfilled. Maybe. I don't know if you would change from Tharpo, the happiness coach to Tharpo. Well, if if I ever change from happiness coach, what I'll be is a uh, uh, pain management person. Oh yeah. You're good at that. Because um, for some reason I am pretty good at helping people get rid of chronic pain. Yeah. As long as the doctor says it's okay, then usually I can, uh, what I call myself, this is funny, is what I call myself is a chiropractor. Uh, I'm a conscious, unconscious chiropractor. I get the unconscious aligned with the conscious, and right. then you don't have to fight against yourself. That's, That's my right. yeah. my whole thing in hypnosis. Because, yeah, not only have you studied a lot of stuff, but I mean, heavens to Betsy, I, I think you've missed like one of my classes in the past two years because you had a gig that day or something like that. And you've also been going to tons of other people's classes. Um, I, I don't want to mention other people's names, but just basically if they teach it, you've been there, probably gotten certified by them. Um, you've done a lot of study and a lot of sessions with people where you were, weren't sure about your skill level. So you didn't charge any money for like hundreds of hours of, of sessions with people. 
like over 300 for three hours and more than that actually but 300 uh, sessions three hour sessions yes three hour sessions yeah that's a bit excessive but yeah we talked some, about that. yeah we talked about that before <laughs> and uh, i'm 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 working on making them hour sessions yeah. and more, yeah. more like that yeah. and but yeah, so, so do you think that's essential? Do you think that's an essential thing for everyone to do? Should everyone study as much as you have done? No, 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 no. I think yes and no. Yes, I think everybody should keep studying. Mm-hmm. You never, because if you're a master and you quit studying, then the people in, who's under you will become the master and you won't be the master anymore. So we mm-hmm. always have to study and learn more. And yet, here's what I would suggest niche down to something you really like find out the teachers you can really learn under learn under them and find what works for you it doesn't matter what works for anybody else it okay, good. so let's just stop it. let's let's put that in a number so the first thing is find out what really really works for you what that that you yeah. want to do so happiness was your thing it doesn't have to be anybody else's thing right what is it like for you what is it for you that really goes like yes this is what i want to do and then find a teacher or multiple teachers who can help you get the skills to be able to do that. Right. Right. So mm-hmm. then you say, well, how, if, if, if happiness is my thing, I want to be the happiness coach. Who are some teachers that ha- can help me create happiness for other people? And whether it's hypnosis or, you know, whatever um, you've taught, you've studied a lot of people in order to be able to do that. And then um, is that right? Is that, am I, uh, what was number three then after that? Just really, Okay, so first you got that, and the first one, you find something you want to do yeah. it's in your heart. The second, you study under the teachers who can teach you, and you yeah. learn as much as you can. Yeah. You don't stop studying, and then you start practicing. I mean, okay. you start working with people, and the more people you work with, the more comfortable you get, and the more comfortable you get, then it'll be unconscious competence. Right. We don't have to go through that lesson, but yeah. So once you get to unconscious competence, then lead with your heart because your heart will know the way connect with their heart. And then you got in, in, as long as you come in with good intent that the person in front mm-hmm. of you is all you're worried about right now, and you're not going to do anything to harm them at all or uh, physically or mentally and then you bring your heart in and open it up to them and they open up and then you find out what they want to work with yeah what they want to change and then you use any tool in your toolbox here's one thing i i think people get caught up on and i really disagree i don't care what tool you use at all as long as it helps the person in front of you Mm -hmm. I'm not caught. And, you know, because there's 8 billion people or more and everyone's an individual. They're all different. One tool might not be the end all to everything. If Mm -hmm. you only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? Right, (laughs) There's a metaphor. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, so let's find that. And uh, and then let's not use our map of the world on other people. Let's let them, let us be the guide and let them, figure out their own problems because if you do it the other way if you tell them they should must who ought to do anything yep. and they can put the blame on you and and we don't accept the blame we accept we're the guide and it's your you're here to do the work yeah exactly that's that's perfect that's that's it we, we can stop talking now i think that says the whole thing and it's really true because you know as a clown as a musician as an actor whatever um we have to study those skills so they, we get it into our body. So the juggling is just unconscious competence. So you can juggle while you're on a, and I can't, but you can. Well, well the reason why while you're on a when you're juggling knives around somebody, you can't be worried about the knives. You have to be worried about the person yeah. inside yeah. That you're juggling around because they could move any given way. So you have to be prepared. So yeah. that takes a lot, you know, that takes a certain amount of skill or you can't do it. Yeah. And that, that is a metaphor. Juggling knives around people. You got to not be thinking about the knives. You got to be thinking about the person. That's a metaphor for therapy right there for coaching. Yeah, beautiful. Excellent. So, but, you know, even Milton Erickson did that same thing when he was starting out. You know, this is Milton Erickson, who always was famous for saying, trust your unconscious mind, you know. He didn't. I mean, he sort of did from the beginning because he was just a farm boy who had polio and he had to learn to cure himself. You know, nobody else had set that roadmap for him before. So he he did that himself. 
And after, when he was in medical school, he would spend hours analyzing, you know, like, what is the situation with this person? You know, what can I learn from this? And, and, and write, you know, scripts of hypnosis. He never used a script later on, but in the early days, he wrote scripts and scripts and scripts of hypnosis, 30 pages, single space, you know, amazing, you know, amount of work that he went into. So finally he could get the skills in his body enough that he th then could say, trust my unconscious mind. And I'll just sit with this person and, and be a blank slate. You know, I, the greatest therapists that I've talked to are, are that they, they go in and they just like know nothing. They're, they're there with that person. They don't have to worry about rapport skills because they know the secret. They know the shortcut to rapport, which is to actually care about that person. And then everything happens automatically. You know, if you've, especially if you've studied how to juggle those knives, you know, that it just, it just happens. So you can, you can just, you know, be an empty slate, an empty vessel and be there with that person heart to heart, you know, soul to soul, breathing to breathing. You know, I had a guest on uh, a couple of days ago in, in the podcast, Charlie Badenhop, who, who's amazing with that, you know, his ability to just sort of be in that know nothing state. And just be there with the person, just picking up on what they're putting out and, and vibing with them so much that he knows what they're going to say practically when they're, before they say it. You know, that's that sort of thing. Stephen Gilligan is the same way, you know, and you. That's just beautiful. It's really, it's really great. Really great. So, Jeff, the um, thing that I think some people would, might want to know is how do you know? Because I, I have also known a lot of people, myself included, who have done various things. And I thought to myself, you know, okay, if I do this, then I'll be happy. Or if I get that, then I'll be happy. You know, so I, I try out for a school play and I'd get the lead and it's like, oh, I don't really like acting. Or, I, you know, I'd go to student government and get elected and it's like, oh, I don't really like student government. You know, I would do these various things and I'd get it and then go like, oh, that's not what I want. I even saw a quote by like, I think Langston Hughes the other day, that said basically the same thing. It's like, as soon as you get what you're going for, you don't want it anymore. Um, it, it's something like that. How, how do you know, how, how can a person, you know, get to know that thing that you're talking about, that find what it is that you want, that is following your heart, that says, this is my niche, not just because it's going to make me money, but because it's going to make me money and Make me excited about getting to the office every day. How do people do that? Well, uh, the, the shortcut right there is go do something, go find something in the world that you would do for free. And you okay. would do it for free all the time. And you love it so much. Whatever that is. I'm not saying you have to be a coach, but what would you do for free? Mm. What would I do for free? I would entertain for free. I would do uh, not anymore. I'm a little bit more on the entertainment. I don't do any of that for free anymore. <laughs> but I, but for happiness, yeah. helping spreading happiness, I do that for free because it it means so much to me. Helping people help me, and and it's true. I'm being a little selfish here because every time I help somebody, it helps me. Mm. You know, because if you have a let's say you have a uh, virtue of kindness, okay. And say you do have that. If you have a virtue of kindness, every single thing you do for somebody else helps you just as much or more. Because if you open some, a, a door for somebody, you feel good because you're doing a service for other people. Mm -hmm. So if you value kindness, that's the one of the best, fastest ways you can become more kind. Let's go back to the first question because I'm a flighty guy. So let's go back there is... What I would still say, this is the thing I was going to do at 19, find something in the world you want to do. Mm -hmm. I, and this is another thing I want people to understand. I don't want you to just go jump into this stupid another gig for money or any other reason. Write down all these reasons you want to do this and find something you really want to do because you're going to spend some time. You, they say it to become a real successful business, whatever that is, 10 years. So for the next 10 years, what would that be? What would you want to do? If you mm -hmm. could do anything in the world and there was no, uh, there was nothing and you just could pick something you would want to do for 10 years, what would it be? And that's the one thing you can ask. The other thing is, you know, what would you do for free? And then make that your living. If you can do that, then that time as, because 
the only thing you can't get back in life is time. You can get more money, more stuff, but you can never get more time. So at one point in your life, time will be the most valuable thing you have. And it's the most valuable thing you have now. You just don't understand it. Or some people don't understand it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people do understand it. So understand wherever you're spending your time, you're spending your life because you're not getting it back. So make sure to... Make an educated decision when you move from something else. I'm not saying jump out of your job you have now. Keep that security until you're in the other place. But every, every day, every day do something. It doesn't matter what. Wheels in motion stay in motion. Wheels in motion. If you want something, no matter what it is in life, you just keep working at it. Wouldn't it be better if you had started last year? (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's what i tell everybody i said wouldn't you want your goal if you would have started last year wouldn't it even be better so one you know if you do one thing a day that's 365 steps towards whatever you're getting to so right. let's start there and and if you want to do more do more i'm going to tell you an average i probably average four to eight hours a day on the phone, either studying or helping clients. Uh, so on, that's on the phone. Yeah, every day. On every the phone. Day. Phone. You study on the phone. Well, I call people on the phone to either study with them, and, uh, but I, I mean, that's not counting the classes I go to. I go to like ten hours of class every week, but I mean, eight hours a day, not counting class wow. on the phone, helping people. I have a bunch of people who I uh, mentor. For some reason, I, this guy came to me. I did a show for him a few years ago, and he said, I, I've been searching for you because you you were such I, – I told him about hypnosis and everything. I, I did a show for him and, with hypnosis, and, um, and I said, you know what the Buddha says? Basically, when you need your teacher, they will appear. And so I've been uh, mentoring him for about six months. So, wow. uh, it, so I have – it's really successful stories of with a bunch of people. And I, I think the heart is the, when you bring your heart in and I, I'm not telling anyone to study as much as I am. And because I know what I figured it out. It took, took, took a long, long time, but I'm getting a dopamine hit every time I study because <laughs> I love it so much right. and it just keeps me studying. So, right. so great. That's, no, that's good. good. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I do this, I do that, not nearly as many hours as you do, but I certainly um, am on the same page as you, as far as, you know, continuing to study the, the idea of the, the wheels in motion. I put it a little differently. I refer to the uh, um, Newton's law that a body in motion tends to stay in motion. So just stay in motion. So we, yeah, that's where the ease process comes from the E A S E of that acronym of that little process, you know, the E is easy, just do something, even if it's easy, but you're still moving in the right direction. And then you can do higher levels, the acceptable and the stretch and the extraordinary levels are all there. But the idea is that, yeah, you keep that, you know, the ball rolling. Um, Doug, I want you to know, I stole both of those from you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. You. <laughs> I, I, I'm using your, I'm uh, preaching your stuff back to you right now. Uh, basically the ease thing and wheels in motion. I just, I, it was easier for me to say wheels in motion than the whole, the, where I got it. So uh, I can tell you, that's what I do with a lot of the teachers. I just sort of condense it and put it in my brain and use it. Yeah, there's there's a process I do with people. The first thing I do if in my ha- happiness protocol, I say, have you ever made a mistake? Mm, yeah, sure. And then when they say that, I say, OK, and then I do a whole program that w- by the end of it, they've never made a mistake. Uh-huh. What yeah. they did is learn to be the best them they can be. And when you do that, every little negative thing you can take out of your mind and put positive in. It's just a little bit, but each little bit counts. Just okay, so let me let me it. let me stop you there and go back to that because I think people okay. might be able to get a, a lot out of this thing you're talking about here if we can understand how to do it. Um, everyone's aware of their self talk. You know, we're talking to ourselves all the time. We we are just every every human being is constantly talking to themselves. I believe I'm pretty sure I'm right. I could be wrong. We got but, we got sixty to eighty thousand thoughts a day. Yeah, so. 
what's which one specifically do we need to talk about when you say that you can never have a, a negative self talk? Or what, what do you mean? No, no, no. Okay, so hold on. Let's. I. I. I sometimes uh, with communication, you say something and they take it to a different well, whatever. Let's go with what I meant. Okay. So yeah. what I meant when I I tell everybody they have to understand and see what their self talk is saying. Okay, so how sometimes sometimes negative self talk is a positive thing. If it serves you a purpose to say, I gotta do this, I have to do that, and your brain saying you gotta do it, if that's a motivator to a positive intent, Mm -hmm. then it's okay. But that's why we want to assess what we're saying. If you keep on saying you're stupid and you say, Why am I so stupid? Your unconscious mind is going to figure out a million ways why you're so stupid. And yet you could say, why am I so smart? And it would come up that. So let's start switching. What I call is just a reframing what we're thinking. Now, if there's, there is a, a little thing there, there is an if, if the negative self-talk is doing a positive intent, then we want to know about that because we don't really, because some people like to move from pain and go towards prep. Pre, uh, I guess everybody does pleasure Uh, everybody wants to do that so if they're using the pain as a good thing and they're getting a positive intent i'm okay Mm -hmm. with that and yet if it's if they're doing negative self-talk and saying i'm stupid i'm not worthy and they're going down moping and depressed and it's not doing any service and i say let's get rid of it also i say let's get rid of all can'ts unless they you can't be a brain surgeon tomorrow at least a good one if you never even studied brain surgery at least a good one <laughs> yeah <laughs> i suppose i could do brain surgery but it might right. not that too well. but not very good i would think <laughs> oh. or go down a, a a black diamond ski slope if you've never even put on skis before yeah. okay so something like that you can't do but yet <laughs> You know, Ford, Ford said, if you say you can, you can most likely. And if you can't, you can't. So let's take the can'ts out because when people say can't, that, that shuts off all the resources. To right. that thing. Not that they can't be started back up with some hypnosis. It's just that they're knocking out the resources. So I, that's one of the cuss words to me is can't. And I actually want them to be aware. I should, I must, who ought to. And we want to reframe those for happiness to, I get to, I have the opportunity to change them to a positive. So the the thing is that once they start doing that, they get aware of it. You know, the four steps of learning something you don't know till you know. And you most people aren't even aware that that's that negative self-talk is affecting. Okay. But it is. So that's what I get them aware of first. So we have, I, we want to work on it unless it, and we want to know if it's doing a positive or negative intent, because that's all, all emotions are good unless till they're not, and they're all good till they're not. And then when they're not, that's when you want to assess what to do next. And the same thing with all the self-talk, is it, is it doing a positive intent or is it doing a negative? So yeah. What if somebody's got positive self-talk, but it's ending up negative? Like okay. if they say, like if they say, "I'm I'm great. I'm the best at this. I'm 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 fantastic. I'm just great. I love myself. This is I don't need to study." I'm well, that's uh, the it's called the something cougar effect. Basically, they they think they're uh, there's a the Dunning Kruger effect. Dunning and Kruger effect. Yeah. Running yeah. Kruger effect. Basically, they're saying they have competence when they don't. Right. So they're unconscious. They're not competent, but they think they are. So yes. what? What do you do with that? I would, so that's uh, that's I think a false belief. But we're not wanting people to do. I, I'm not working on that. I'm not saying, oh, say something you're not. I want truth because your unconscious mind is going to know the truth most of the time. Let's hope so. And, Except one thing, you can fake smile. Tell us about that. I know. Oh my God! Did you know? Because when you smile, you get endorphins and serotonin, these happiness hormones. But you don't even your unconscious mind doesn't know the difference between a real smile and a fake smile. And if you don't even want to do that, you can stick a pencil in your mouth push it back and you still have a fake smile and you still, you'll still get that happiness hormones. It's just so cool. I love this stuff. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and then if you laugh, 
did you, uh, uh, there's a thing about laughing. Some people probably don't understand this, but it brings endorphins. Endorphins are pain, natural painkillers. Mm. And uh, they also enhance your mood to be happy. But when you ever hit yourself and you start laughing at all, it, because <laughs> that laughing is taking away the pain. I mean, some people don't realize that, but you hit your an elbow or your knee on something, you go, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It, and those endorphins go straight there. And it's so cool. A natural painkiller right there, just yeah. by laughing. So, so Jeff, I, I'd like to, a bunch of things that you said earlier about how, um, if you want to be a coach or pretty much anything that, you know, just take the time to get good at it, to take, you know, don't, don't expect overnight success, but keep plugging away, keep moving away. Um, you also basically said, don't quit your day job in the meantime. I have had that sort of thing take place where people would take my hypnosis courses or NLP course, whatever, and then just sort of quit their job after they got their certification and say, okay, I'm certified, everybody. Let's go. Okay. With that on. said, with that said, some people can do that. And they might have had a job where they understood, but that kind of person needs to know business, real good business sense, knows how to build a business because they have, they don't have mastery skill now. They so have that's, that's a that's an interesting skill. question because let me just stop you there. That's that's a really critical thing. Is that um, being an NLP practitioner, being a, a hypnotherapist, being a, a certified life coach, whatever, being good at coaching, let's just say, is only half the battle. You also need to have business sense. Right. You get you have to, you know, you were saying before when you started off as a coach, it's like, well, I got good at the things that could make money. I could do the the as a clown. As a clown, yeah. Did I say that? I'm sorry. But as, as a coach, a clown. but it's okay. Yeah, okay. As a as a clown. Yeah, you got good at <laughs> would be a weird, weird coaching model to get good at doing balloons, but but <laughs> as a clown, it made sense. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as a clown, it made sense. But you know, that's that's an interesting point. I mean, you could apply that to coaching, get good at the things that you make money at as a coach, whatever that might be as a hypnotherapist, as an example, many people come for smoking cessation or whatever. So pain management, you get good at these things that, you know, you can wow. niche into that situation. And by the way, speaking of niching, it's very interesting that, you know, if you, if you niche into a certain special specialty, people will say, Oh, wow, that's great. Do you also know, can you do this? You know, they will, they will come to you. If you're an expert, in something, you know, whether it's pain management or smoking, whatever, you know, you're an expert. So they'll say, okay, well, he's an expert in that. But by the way, sir, can you do this as well? Or madam, can you do this? They will come to you anyway, even though it's not your niche. So niching is really important. So get good at something that you can do that makes money and then grow from there. Is that fair to say? Yes, for sure. Uh, niching is like uh, you had a, a person on your podcast, uh, to rich, niche to rich. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we know who he is. Jason <laughs> so, Lynette, yeah. Uh, yeah, Jason Lynette. That, I got his lifetime membership too. So, um, and, and, you know, the thing is niche to rich, but also if, if it's a niche you don't like, don't niche to that niche. Right. Uh, see, my niche is going to be if I go from happiness, yeah. it's going to be pain management because uh, because as a clown, I don't know if you know, I jumped rope on stilts for over 10, 20 years and I have titanium on my back mm -hmm. and I tore my meniscus on stilts. And so mm -hmm. it's sort of like athletics, like if you play football, you get a little injury here and there. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm there's discomfort in my body a lot of times. And then how do you work with that? So I studied a lot about discomfort mm -hmm. too. Um, and also, did you know, if you take discomfort away from people, they can be much happier <laughs> because that's one of the pillars of happiness is health. Because, yeah. because if you don't have health, it's harder to be happy. Indeed. If you don't have money, it's harder to be happy. If you don't have, you know, the number one thing for happiness is actually you know, relationship with self and others, mm. the highest, if you have a higher power, the relationship with that higher power, and then yourself, that's the most important for your happiness to, to really understand that you're worthy of being happy, mm -hmm. self-esteem. So anyway, that's why we want to get this negative self-talk. I've talked to so many people where they say, I can't be happy, or I don't want to be happy, or what, and if they don't want to be happy, ooh, I'm out of there. <laughs> okay. But uh, they're saying, 
you know, God doesn't want me to be happy. And I said, no, I don't think that's it. And so you, you <laughs> have to go against, you have to help them understand it's not the truth. And usually when, I'm sorry. That's okay. So um, let me ask you this. So getting back to how do you do it? You know, what people need to be good at the coaching practice, the hypnosis practice, whatever, but they also need to be good at business things. Um, you are transitioning from being a, a clown to being a, a coach. I mean, you'll, you're going to do both for a while. You're not quitting your day job, if you will, but you're going to, you're going to do both for a while, but ultimately, you know, stop walking on stilts because it hurts your back, et cetera. Um, and be able to, you know, make a living without having to put face paint on basically. Um, what are some of the business things one needs to know in order to be a successful coach? You've got a, a one thing a you got to get, you got to get the, the basic things you have to have is you have to have a website. You're going to have to have business cards more than likely, maybe not on zoom anymore. Uh, I would say, start building a brand, whatever your brand's going to be. If you can see my brand's branding out. Of, oh, you can't see it, but uh, <laughs> you can see it, but others can't, but I, I've been, I worked on, been working on the logo for my business and and then also i'm doing uh every week well i've done several several about 20 or 30 of them but uh what i'm putting out every week on the sunday is a new way to be happy so i'm going to establish my myself as a professional in happiness and then you know it wherever that goes where because that's what i do i i really want to spread happiness so you, all these all these you'll be able to see them each week when they're coming out so establish that get you a good website you know i've got i used to have like a hundred different uh people saying how great i was pretty soon i have two on my website right now where they're uh videoed out but i'm going to have some really big ones where they're going to write a book about me i have two people i know one person's going to put me in the book that uh their journey to happiness. So wow. I'll have a book with nice. a whole book. So, and then, uh, and then another one, I think is going to write a book, but it's, it's going to be uh, to help other people in a different way. So. So if, I, they, if they get a website, then, uh, then uh, that's all they need to do. Get no, 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 no. Now you got to figure out. <laughs> okay. So now you figure out an avatar, an avatar, find it. You can get them on the, you can see kind of what your, people who you're going to you want to know who you're going who who's your audience who's your okay, audience. okay. so that the, an avatar for those who you don't know and I'm hope, hopefully you do know this or if you don't find out but an avatar is uh an imaginary person who sort of fits the the globe the global idea of who your audience members are like who are you talking to like right now jeff and i are talking to each other but we are imagining that there are people listening to this podcast you know who are those people that would be listening to this podcast who are who's our audience so you create an avatar which is basically kind of the average your yeah. listener your your audience your your customer who's going to come to you for coaching services create that yeah. avatar and then create your advertising speaking to that person and some of the things you really want to look at is uh how much money do they have can they afford you that's one of the first things you ask what age range are you going for who can you work with the best who can use your service whatever you're serving if you're who who's your audience right. and somebody who can benefit from your stuff not just somebody who listens is just you know but who could benefit who would pay for your service mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who and who do they have enough money to pay for your service? So this is where you can figure out where you want to advertise or put money when you find that. And then you need a good sales pitch. So you want to find either if you can't do it, have somebody write you out a script or you write out a script or memorize something and do it in a, a manner where it says uh, you give them a little pain. Are you, are you sick of not being happy? Are you and you don't want to use uh, words that get you in trouble. So uh, don't use any words to get in trouble. And yet you could say unhappiness. Do you have the pain? You could use pain of unhappiness. I can help you with that. Okay. <laughs> so so where is this sales pitch happening? Where, where are you talking about? Well, you would put it, you could put it in front of your, uh, you want to be established. Okay. And you want to be established as a, um, 
what's that called? Uh, uh, a professional. And okay. you, so you, you're kind of giving, just like the people before and some of your other podcasts said, you're giving away a lot of good information while establishing yourself as the expert. And then you'll have, you won't have to sell it when people come, they will, they will come. Uh, I, I used to fill the dreams, build it and they will come. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so build your, so you're going to build a base and you want to have, because an overnight success is five years, a lot of times. So right, what right, you want right. to do is build your, establish a base, have your computer, get your zooms up, get your zoom because there's so many things, there's other things. So you want to figure out what zoom and tell them, put it on your website. How do they do a zoom session? What kind of camera do they need? Stuff like that. And Tell them to reboot their computer. Tell them the safety things. You know, you have to have a lot of stuff. So all this stuff, you just start learning each and every day. You learn something about your business every day. So uh, in the last two or three years, every uh, not everybody, but I, I would say uh, lots and lots and lots of people went to Zoom. Sure. And I'm only going to do Zoom. I used to do it at my office, and um, but not anymore. I'm I'm, I'm just going to do Zoom sessions. I think it's easier for me now, and it's also safer for not getting in any trouble because you couldn't touch anybody from here, <laughs> you know, so you don't have some of those worries. Mm. And um, I uh, would say, well, the first thing, really, if you ever do a session, ecology of their self, you got you to gotta be aware of what kind of tools you're using if you're using hypnosis uh, if you believe at any point that there's going that there could even be a problem, you might want to give them a safe place or a safe room. I mean, there's all kinds of things to think about. I give them a safe color. If anything ever happens in any of my sessions where they don't feel comfortable, all they have to say is orange. <laughs> and then I say, we'll uh, uh, do that. The other thing uh, I think is essential when you're, uh, you're hypnotizing or working with somebody, watch they're micro movements because every micro movement means something to me. And then I address that. So I, as I do it, I do only personalized sessions with people working off only what's best for them. And that's how we go into, it. I'm sorry. I, I, I jumped ship because uh-huh. I'm kind of flighty here and, uh, and it works for me most of the time. Yeah, that's good. No worries. No, that was, that was great. And I, I w- could have stopped you a number of times just to define some of the terms. Um, but I think most yeah, I know what they're talking about, and if they're, yeah. if they're not sure, they can put a comment. They can take your classes. They can take my classes. Yeah. Oh but, my you know, gosh! Just but so watching for micro movements, of course, is a lot easier in person. You know, watching a person's breathing as an example is something I emphasize a lot when you're working with somebody, and that's you know possible on Zoom. You can do it on Zoom. It's a lot easier in person. Um, but I oh appreciate- yeah, but we're not in person, so we I have know. to do what 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 would work, uh-huh. right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Well, one thing you can do, you can have them take off their glasses because they don't need them. They don't need to see at this point. Oh, if you're doing hypnosis. Yeah. 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 And then you can, um, you you can actually see a lot of it. You can't see everything perfect. And yet we got what we got to work with. It's not what, here's the thing. It's not what happens. It's how we deal with it. So, because it's going to happen, it's never going to, I can tell you, Everything in the world is not going to go perfect for you ever, ever. I, I've never met a perfect person in the people. And I used to really think I should be perfect. And I can tell you, I never came up perfect. And I've always came up sad about it. So hmm. my first thing is also say, understand you're not perfect. Okay. Once you can do that, it took so much burden off me. And what problem sometimes people do is because they feel it inside they project it on other people. Right. So they're putting, they need to be, they need to be perfect because I need to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs to be perfect mm-hmm. and see how that works for you. It doesn't. So yeah. if you, if you have one of those things where you have to be perfect, that's one of the first things you can do to get more happiness. Take that away because you can't be perfect. You can be the best you, you can be every day. And right. then if you do that, you never have to live in regret. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So you be your best you the, every day, get up and say, I'm going to be the best me. And that's all you got. And, and, you know, your first five minutes of getting up, you're, you're suggestive, suggest, 
say, say, I'm going to have a great day. It's going to be a great day. And it probably will. And if you say the other, it'll probably be that. So uh, I just, I just love this stuff. I really do. I, I mean, I think most people can tell, I really, really want people to be happy. Here's a few tips for everybody. If you just want to be happier right this second, smile. It doesn't matter if it's a fake smile or a real one. You're going to get serotonin and endorphins. So you're going to get a happiness boost. And then if you even fake laugh. (laughs) 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 And when you do that, you're getting more of that. And that's also a, that's a, that's actually endorphins are coming in and giving you a pain reliever. If there's any discomfort in your body, not only that, when you smile at the world, you help the world. That's true. So Hmm. I, I, that's, that's one thing I'm doing is I want to spread smiles. I don't want to make people smile, but I still want to spread them. You know, you can smile at somebody and it's kind of a hack, but it's like you can spread it if they get it good. If they don't, that's okay. But yet you're still sending goodness because you know what? If you give, you feel good if you believe in giving. So that's cool. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Jeff Tharp, I'm so glad you're here. Tharpo, the happiness coach. Thanks for being here so much. Oh, my God. It was such an honor. I, I swear to God, it was such a. Thank you. Ah, ah, thank you. So how do people find you? Uh, what's your website? Well, I have two. Uh, probably the better one is .net. So it's tharpohypnosis.net or .com. Uh, the net is probably more fixed than the other. The, the com is uh, working from that to get a better one. So, And I've got a lot of other stuff going on. So uh, work from there and... Thank you so much. I, again, I really do want to say thanks, Doug. Hey, Thank no you. worries. So tharpohypnosis.net or tharpohypnosis.com, either one of yeah, those. Yeah, either one of those. .net is probably better. Yes. All right. Great. You're amazing. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> thanks. Well, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you want any more information about today's show, please visit our website at www.essentialcoachingskills.com. Be sure to tune in again next week for our next episode and discover even more about the systems and the secrets that set the best apart.